Firewatch was one of the most anticipated events for Overwatch ever. But now that it is out there, we can hear some mixed reactions. Did Blizzard miss the ball? Or are we missing something? Let's have a look. Hey guys, I'm Dames is from the Omnic Post. A few months ago, I made a video on possible future collaborations that Blizzard could do and that I would like to see in Overwatch. I mentioned Star Wars in that video, but I classified it as it would be great, but it is near impossible. Mainly because Epic seems to have a very tight grip on anything Disney, and that includes Star Wars, of course. But Blizzard must have figured, screw you, you cheap ass Reinhardt lookalike. Hold a collective set of homebrew beers. We got this. And he ended up making Star Wars. The closest Overwatch can get to Star Wars without getting threatening calls in the middle of the night from someone that sounds like a duck is trying to talk and that is always yapping about their boss, Mickey. They must be Italian. Now before you start typing in the comments, I do realize that this event has been in the works for way longer than I made that video. And that Blizzard doesn't give a flying fuck about what I say in my videos. But in any case, Star Wars is out there and a lot of people including myself had been looking forward to this moment for weeks now. It happens that I was out of the office when the event launched. So when I pinged my Discord server mid-dinner asking if they were enjoying the event, I was kind of surprised to see a few disappointed reactions. When I eventually made it home, I jumped into the game with a few of my Discord members and I started to see what they were talking about. The thing is, I think that the disappointing elements do not all stem from the actual game mode, but from something else Overwatch related. But before we dive into those disappointing parts, let's highlight what is good about this mode. For me personally, there's two big winners here, the heroes and the map. I've said it before, but the skins that they made for this season and thus for this mode are on a whole new level. They are outstanding. The fact that they did not only make a themed season with a set of skins that are tied into each other, but that they also set up a unique universe, a storyline and a freaking game mode, that is commendable. Not a lot of games would go that far. What impressed me the most is how these skins take over once you get into the game mode. Sure, you're playing Lucio, Wrecking Ball, Bastion, but you actually are not. Those characters kind of immerse you into the story. That storyline is not going to win any prizes, but I don't think that was the plan either way. What set this all apart and that got us immersed are the voice lines. That's where the magic happens. There are a ton of unique voice lines and interactions. There are the new announcers. Blizzard, please, make these custom announcers happen. It adds so much to the game. The voice talent for Overwatch is just at a new level. And I love the fact that they keep bringing back these people to record lines for all of these events and all of this unique work. It creates a world that gives this very familiar game a new outlook. Anyways, my point being characters sold. Second part, the map. They gave Horizon Lunar Colony a makeover that just slams. There's a lot of people in Hollywood that would love a makeover like that. You know, plastics. You get my point. You can completely recognize the layout, but it looks and feels so different. Like an actual space station or a spaceship. Space thriller? I don't know. It just fits the Empire perfectly. Another plus is some of the mechanics that we're trying. Horizon was a 2 CP map. This Infinite Empire spaceship is actually a 4 CP map, which feels a little cramped to be honest, but that might be old habit speaking. What is interesting though is that those capture points are dynamic. They're not always the same. Every game session you'll have different capture points. Now if they don't send you from left to right all over the map, there is a certain sequence to them. But for every stage they have a few options, which not everybody seems to understand, but we'll get back to that in a second. I just think that this is a very interesting idea. Not interesting enough to fix 2CP on a whole, but something to keep in mind. On top of that, they played with some environmental triggers. There are these canisters, for instance, that basically create a local gravity field when you destroy them. And if you destroy them, they capture both friend and foe. Another idea I would like them to keep around, maybe not for quick play or competitive play, but definitely for arcade and, oh yeah, for PvE. <laughs> there are random zero gravity moments. I don't know what to call them. Occurrences maybe? I don't know. You'll just start floating around as if someone is standing on the wire that feeds the gravity machine. An extra layer of surprise. See, there is a lot good going on in this game mode. Great even. But why are people complaining? Well, as I've said before, there's two teams, the Infinite Empire and the Watchers. Now, each side has a few choices. You basically play four versus four, but there are a lot more options per team. You can have either D.Va or Sigma as a tank on the Empire, or Wrecking Ball and Winston as a Watcher. But that's just it. Those options are a little unbalanced. The Empire can go for Sigma, Bastion, Soldier and Mercy. The perfect combo. I mean, they're so good that it becomes near impossible as Watchers to counter them. Or at least that is what it feels like. 
Blizzard is keeping track of the victories on both sides. The faction that wins will see that reflect in the second chapter of the comic that we got. And while the Empire currently is indeed in the lead, it's not by much. And I personally won all of my Watcher games. Not bragging. Well, yeah, I actually am. I'm actually bragging. <laughs> the only real problem I've run into as a Watcher is that my teammates do not understand where the capture point is. They'll all be huddled up somewhere in the corner, wrong point, going, why is it not moving? Yeah, get over here. You little buggers. And yeah, the turds, the classic. Destroying turds, it's like it's not in our DNA. We can't do it. We don't understand how to kill a freaking turd. That all being said, even if the numbers show you that it isn't as bad, but it feels unbalanced, that is a problem. A problem they can't fix because it is a limited time game mod, but still, understandable why people are disappointed or complaining. Now, the thing is, Blizzard is probably going, hey, but you got an extra team member, make it work. The extra team member is Bonebreaker, aka Doomfist. It is kind of weird to see him fight on the good side, but he is constantly telling you what to do, so yeah, I don't trust him. Now, Bonebreaker is controlled by AI. That and the turrets on the Empire side make up the PvE part in the PvPVE. But um, I really hope that the AI we get in PvE, that we hopefully will eventually get, is going to be a little better. Good old Bonebreaker is good in two things. No, sorry, in three. He can die, he can res, and he feeds. Good God, he feeds. The turrets on the Empire side might be even less PvE, but they do a better job. And they tell you a little less what to do. They're less bossy. Just to say that the PvE element on this whole mode is kind of flimsy. But to be honest, they never really promised us a big PvE element in this mode. And I think that is where we hit the core issue. The reason why people are so disappointed. Expectations. But for a good reason. We have been waiting so long for PvE that we're starting to project our needs, our demands, our hopes, our fears, everything on any new mode that even smells a little bit like PvE. Including myself, I'm doing the same thing. But that's not smart because this is a limited time game mode. It's going to be here for two weeks and it might be back later this year, maybe next year in a different form, but it's not something they want to invest too much time in. They already invested quite a lot of resources to get this done. That's also the reason why we feel it has such a limited replay value. I mean, there's definitely going to be people that will be playing this a lot, but most of us are going to play it till we get our challenges done. And then we'll pick it up again just before they kind of remove it. But that's going to be it. Because there's no bigger story, no bigger context here. It barely is PvPVE, but it could become PvPVE. All these PvVE, I'm driving myself nuts. Well, even more nuts than I was before. I believe it has the potential to become something bigger. Just like Aaron said in his tweet a few weeks ago, this could be the start of something new for Overwatch. Because PvE in Overwatch started out in the same way, small, a little flawed. I just think in the end we'll need more than just that one NPC that is feeding. I don't want to see that one guy running around and dying. I want to see troops, many of them, on both sides because turrets are as much PvE as jump pads are. But Blizzard can do this. We as a community just need to look at this iteration of Star Watch for what it is. A limited time game mode that could be the start of something awesome. Now tell me, what do you think about this mode? And could it be the start of something big? Let me know in the comments. Join me during my streams on twitch.tv slash and make sure to subscribe for more updates on Overwatch.